dark save for light being cast from the big tv screen and the imminent sunrise that's teasing the one starry sky with whispers of morning hey george hey lions how's it going man it is so freaking cold here like i know we don't talk about like our personal lives outside video games a lot but it has been (laughs) unacceptably cold where i live and just like uh It, it has not been ice outside it it has not been ice at all. I have <laughs> it has not been ice to see you either. Oh man, I, I don't know. I think we should both chill about that though. Dude, just be cool. Um, <laughs> uh, God, this is terrible. We we've now devolved into which one was this? Was this Batman and Robin? It was Batman and Robin. Yep. <laughs> it was the one with the nipples on the bat suit. Uh, unfortunately, I think it's only one of two with nipples on the bat suit. It, it is true, <laughs> but it is also one of our close friends Frank's favorite. It, I, rec- I recall uh, him going on a lengthy exposition about how it was his all time, hands down, no hands questions, down. favorite movie. Absolutely. In fact, I know it's his favorite because it is the only Batman movie that he has a physical copy of. Now, who got him that physical copy and demanded that he keep it? It, That doesn't really matter. What matters is it's the only one that he owns and therefore is the one that he loves the most. Yeah, that stands to reason completely. Um, So we played for this episode's game, uh, Dragon Warrior and not Dragon Quest. Or well, was it Dragon Quest? <laughs> so this, this is the thing. I I realized after we decided to play this game that I set myself up for a real doozy of a time trying to explain this. So Dragon Quest is a long-running series, very popular in Japan. It's a Japanese role-playing game series that was later acquired by Square. So the company that makes Final Fantasy is now also the company that makes Dragon Quest. Here's the thing. Uh, this series is deeply beloved. So Dragon Warrior released on the Nintendo Entertainment System in America is the game I played as a kid that I wanted us to play, except here would be the entire episode for that game. Full nostalgia goggles required credits. So Uh I was like, okay, maybe we can play this remake of it. So this game, which was a Nintendo game, was re-released only in japan on the super nintendo and they did a graphical overhaul and they fixed like a bunch of the text and they fixed some of the mechanical things um specifically like control issues not like gameplay mechanics too much uh and then for some insane reason they decided to port that to game boy color and that did come to america so we are playing dragon warrior one for the game boy color Instead of Dragon Warrior for the Nintendo Entertainment System for two reasons. One, it is very nearly the same game. So I feel okay taking in the quality of life improvements. And two, this game would not... I I, I wouldn't want to do a review of that game without the quality of life improvements. It's just... It's super, super of its time, right? Just a lot of things they had not figured out. So this is a review of Dragon Warrior in all its multiverse fluctuations um the game originally was 1986 but the game boy color remake that we played didn't come to america until 2000 but this is not a 2000 game this is a port wholesale of a game from 1986 and here's the last wacky thing because they ported the super nintendo version to the game boy color and the game boy color is more like a portable nintendo and not like a portable super nintendo the game boy color port actually has more in common with the original than the super nintendo remake so huh um do you have a nostalgia experience for that mess that i just described i don't so i want to talk about this other thing um (laughs) So no, and now for something completely different <laughs> and now this um so uh basically i was playing this 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 game and uh and so first of all um yes the nes one is tragic because i was playing it for about half an hour before you said no 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 no. we're playing the game boy <laughs> one and i was like oh good because this sucks like this is bad yeah. you know um yeah. i mean i i had already had i already had as many notes as 
I sometimes have at the end of playing a game in the first <laughs> half an hour, which is not that's not a good thing. You yeah. know, it's well, like, it's it's either a great thing or a terrible thing. There's no that that kind of like explosion of notes isn't neutral. I would actually argue, right, and 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 it's definitely not neutral. I'd actually argue it's more likely to be a bad thing because it's really easy to point out things that are broken on a car but if a car is running perfectly smoothly it's hard to point to the thing that's making that happen Um, so that but uh what okay so (laughs) you can get a massage in this game this is what i want to talk about instead of my nostalgia experience you can get a massage in this game right did you get the massage Uh, yes did you pay the gold for the massage I, i did what is happening there i literally in my notes i have what in the unholy f is with the powder puff massage because it goes um hey would you like a massage and i was like i i guess you know i'm reviewing this game so whatever and then it just goes like puff 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 and i'm like what is what what is happening and, and uh the screen is it, black it, while this black. is happening yeah so you just yeah. see the text yeah so you just see the text and it goes like puff 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 and then this the text slows down and that was when i was like no it has to be the thing i'm thinking it can't be anything else because it's like puff 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 and it it she says something and then it says giggles and i'm like did i just pay for sex i think i think that i did and then i walked away the to be fair i the player walked away the exact way i assumed the character also walked away from that encounter which was So that I wanted to share that because I didn't I did did is that a visual note is that a gameplay and mechanics <laughs> note where do you put in the sex worker in 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 our normal review structure I wasn't sure but since I knew I didn't have a nostalgic goggles experience a nostalgic experience I wanted to put it in there yeah no that's um I mean no no notes a plus story <laughs> <laughs> yeah because my my experience of that was uh, very similar um and it's one of those things that is obviously supposed to be funny in the original Japanese. It's probably not a powder puff massage with the words puff, puff, puff over and over. Every time game uh, like localizers do stuff like that, there's always part of me that just wonders, couldn't you have just taken this out entirely? Just yeah. re- remove that one sprite from this one room. And then there's no one in this one room for me to talk to. And then it'll be like a thing of internet lore that in the Japanese version, there's a woman you can go and sleep with. Ha ha ha. Right. Like I, yeah. I just, I always wonder like, why did you just try to G rate it instead of just removing it entirely? Right. Like don't yeah. pan the the camera to the billowing curtains in this like Mickey mouse cartoon. Just don't <laughs> have this scene in this Mickey yeah. mouse cartoon. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that, that that they were in a boardroom and they're like, okay, so we can't, you know, say thing X. What are you, what are you thinking? Are you thinking like puff? Or are you thinking like like boom? Like what, what are you think? And then just one person says like, um, I, I'm I'm sorry, but do do we need this at all? And then they just get like thrown out of the, yeah. you know. But yeah, yeah right just, out the window. Well, and, and this is the thing is, to be fair, it's not this game is not directed at small children, right? It's not that mm-hmm. this is a game for small children. It's that the Japanese have a very different temperament for that kind of humor than Americans did at this time in history, because in America, video games were directed at small children. So, and the cultural differences besides like what's okay for a kid versus what's not right. So it's, it's not like, Oh, well, this is a Mickey mouse cartoon. It's not, but the Americans were trying to pretend it was and puff, puff, puff. Yep. It's just like a good old, well, anyways, we'll, we'll get to that later. What? You God, what's, uh, what a what a like <laughs> slam on the brakes, pulled the emergency <laughs> brake. No, it's, it's fine. It's fine. Um, you, uh... So I I do want to mention my nostalgia experience for this game because the reason I wanted to play this game is uh, this is one of the games I associate a hundred percent with my older brother, like to the point where when I fire the game up and you start in the castle, so there's the the castle music, like I could imagine exactly where in his room i was sitting watching him play and reading the nintendo power about the original nintendo dragon warriors so like this is that was deep right almost nothing else in the game was nestled quite that deep but like that that was just one of those things where i was like oh this game is on that 
that short list along with like Sim City, where it's like, oh, this is this is a game I remember my brother playing. Ooh, I want to play a game that goes that far back in my my gaming history, and it doesn't really come up again after that, right? It's not like when I got older, I then became a huge fan of the Dragon Quest series. I I mostly associate Dragon Quest or Dragon Warrior with him and Dragon Quest actually with one of our patrons because this game was a listener request. So like, yeah, and he's a patron, a listener and a patron. So um, mm. that's a perfect segue into you should probably support us in one way or another. Some of the ways you can do that is you can find us on Twitter and shout words at us. You can go to our website and shout words at us and ask uh, for us to play games. Uh, you can watch me play some of these games. I played through the entirety of Dragon Warrior on Twitch. So if you don't believe me, you can go watch me defeat the Dragon Lord. Um, if you want to go crazy and actually support us, uh, besides being a listener, you can always rate and review or recommend us to people. Those word of mouth recommendations or everything. Uh, and if you actually want to spend money, you can become a patron. And if you become a patron, everybody gets the after show. So it's more show, but only for people who have money. But it's yeah. only, it's as little as $1. Just, just but one. they have to have the money. Yeah, but you got to have the money. Um, you got to have the money. But, but only $1. Uh, $1. The if money. You, if you have more than $1 uh, and you choose to waste, spend, donate it to us, patronize us with it, uh, then you can actually get your name <laughs> Shout it out. That is technically the verb. Um, <laughs> it is. <but> it... <laughs> shout it out on the show. Uh, so we want to take a moment to thank our 8-bit classics, Kevin. All right. So here's the thing, man, is um, <laughs> there's there's not a lot. There's not a lot, you know, of like unique stuff. I can't do like weapons. There's three, you know, I can't do, you know, the shields and yeah, I could do monsters, but I'm instead going to uh, um, do do a, do a slightly different thing. So so uh roll me in again <laughs> our first our 8-bit classics kevin a key ends on throwing krillin jason a very serious tn yarno a calculating android 18 and john a brawling broly our 16-bit heroes jacob a napoleon complex to vegeta and michael super saiyan son goku and our full 3D supporter, David. Yamcha. Because so, <laughs> he can't always be the best one. Sometimes no, you no, got to do that. Yeah, you got to keep him on his yeah. toes. So the reason why I do that is because um, I didn't know what else to do. And as we, we all know, is that one of the, per the person who did the art for Dragon Quest and by extension, the artwork for the cover art to this game is Akira Toriyama, who also did the artwork for Dragon Ball Z, which leads us nicely into visuals. Yeah. And you did such a great transition that I wanted, I had to meet yeah. it. You know? Oh, the, you the question is, now are you going to always try and transition? Will, will I your... No. no. I, I mean, I no, wouldn't. This is as good as it gets. <laughs> this is it. This is our last show. <laughs> yeah. So this is the thing about these visuals. Uh, the American box art had like generic fantasy art it's good like it's a really good piece of artwork but it's it's generic fantasy art the japanese box art which i didn't see until years and years later it's so obvious that it's kira toriyama's art style right it's just so so obvious but in the game is a nest game remade for the game boy color so you know not a lot of super rich art in 40 by 40 pixels but <laughs> the monsters you can absolutely see his hand in a lot of the monster designs uh, because he does those like kind of weird dragon faces where the eyes are like sort of on top, right? They, mm -hmm. they almost look like kind of cartoon alligators like in the, the face. Um, some of the uh, the werewolves look a lot like the chief of police in the <laughs> Dragon Ball universe, right? Yeah. So like there's if you know his artwork from that's, basically that's, anywhere that's, else. It's racist, by the way. Continue. <laughs> I'm not saying I'm they all saying, look alike. I'm I, saying, looked, I mean, I, you, okay, you're just saying because like the dog was the president and now there's another like werewolf out there killing people. You're basically saying, I'm just saying that I, <laughs> I don't see breeds. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. I, I could fight back a little bit more, but I think I don't see breeds is the way that that yeah, right. is supposed to end. So well, well played. Well played. Um, Thank you, sir. Touche. Uh, 
you can see his hand in the monster design more than anywhere, right? Because the characters mm-hmm. are just so character is so small and so tokenized that it's impossible to to really see his hand in it. Now, later in the later Dragon Quest games, it's like, oh, my God, like it's just, you know, Gohan is everywhere you look and, <laughs> and every woman is Chi Chi and every woman is Bulma. Right. So it's just like, yeah, later. But in this game, all of it comes through, at least as far as I'm concerned, in the the monster design, which is pretty varied and pretty good. Oh yeah, no the the, the monster design is pretty solid. Um, and yeah, I, I agree with you completely because when I I saw the 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 dragon, uh, I basically all I could see was Gohan fighting dragons. You know, back in the uh, early days of Z, and I was like, these this is just one to one for sure. Um, yeah, so uh, the 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 monster design is is varied. Um, it does. Uh, so I will say that that. They don't do this to the point where I found it like obnoxious. They do do some palette swapping later on, you know, where it's just like, oh, well, this is the super scorpion. The first one was gold, but this one's silver, you know, and it's like, I, all right, you know, um, it product of its time. It I would have been surprised if they did not do that. But it's not like, you know, they have like the blue slime and the red slime, so on and so forth. But it's not so pervasive to the point where I was like, you guys have three monsters. What are you doing? You know, they do have a number of monsters. They are very they are varied and they are part of the discovery aesthetic that is or the exploration um, aesthetic that is part of this game and, and, and generally part of games of this this type. Uh, and I didn't feel like I, I came to the to the show to be like, hey, show me all of these cool new songs. And they're like, we got to, you know, and it's like, uh, n- no, you know, so so I don't feel that the palette swapping was excessive. Um, it, it's not excessive, and there's enough variety that the the monsters also have a gradient, and the palette swapping has a gradient, and they don't completely overlap, right? So, like, you start seeing there, there's you know, let's say A, B, C, D monsters, and right outside the castle, you see A and B monsters, and then in the next area, you see like B prime and C monsters. And then in the next area you see like C, C prime and D monsters. Right. So like it, it makes it feel like, Oh, these monsters can't coexist with those monsters because like those ones are too powerful for these other weaker monsters to feel comfortable over there. So because there's this kind of like smear of designs and colors that sort of like gradually goes up and down as you, you move to the different parts of the continent, it it doesn't feel literally just like, oh, there are slimes and there's red slimes and blue slimes and green slimes and metal slimes and gold slimes, right? Like there's enough variety to almost mask it, right? Like I, I don't think a eight-year-old me would have been like, huh, why are there so few monsters? <laughs> <laughs> what What's going on here? Um, what, so the, my my notes on this game kind of have two overarching themes. So I'll, I'll kind of like slot them in when they when they hit. So one is uh, to talk about the conveyance of the game, and the other one is to talk about um, the discovery aesthetic. You know, like the the, the exploration, right? The, the how it entices explorers. Um, so one of the things so that that for I, I really struggled with. You know, where do I go? What do I do? Right. Um, and I think that it, it, this is the game that um, he references, the Eagle Raptor, act, Eagle Raptor references in the scene where he talks about I, that, right? I think he is the screenshot that is on screen when he says that, I think, is actually Dragon Warrior 2. Ah. It, but it, it's from <laughs> it's from the original three. It's either right. one, two or three, but I'm pretty sure it's not one. Gotcha. Um, so anyway, so, you know, I, I kind of did have to a degree the seed in my head planted of like this game might have get bad conveyance. So the thing that I, I think that I struggled with with the visual, right, is because at first I was like, well, they don't tell me where to go. They don't tell me what to do. Like, how, how in the world could I ever find my way in this thing? And I said, well, you know what? They, you know, another really, really famous game where they didn't do that? Zelda. <laughs> and I didn't seem to have as much of an issue with that. So then that's why I'm going to draw a lot of comparisons between Zelda and this game is because Zelda also plops you down in the middle of the world and kind of doesn't, I mean, it gives you even less direction than this one. This one actually says like, there's a dragon, you got to go kill it, go to the east, you know? Um, so that's actually like a point in its favor for conveyance. So the world is huge, right? But there's not a lot in it in terms of, you know, like interesting things right so there's a a lot of trees a lot of hills a lot of mountains and a lot of 
lava for an average, you know, it, world. It is poisoned land. Mm, it is so poisonous that it, it seeps through your metal boots. Yes. Yes. Yeah, I, I think I think it's it's supposed to be like corrupted, right? Like it's mm, corrupted land that's just like that be, is, being there. It's there's like a miasma. I don't know. Bad bad uh, kind of okay. stuff. Yeah, because yeah, when you, you know, when just, you beat the game, all the poisoned land tiles turn into flower tiles. Aw, that's so cute. Um <laughs> and, no, I like that. So um so the world is huge and it doesn't have a lot of stuff in it as opposed to Zelda where what it did, what Zelda did is each area was its own little vignette, right? So you would move up into an area and then like you had stuff to do in that area, right? But then it made it very easy to say like okay, even if you wanted to draw out a map yourself, you're like okay, this is the area that looks like a T. This is the area that, you know, has a lake around it. This is the area with this holy crap horse guy. What what's his deal? You know, this game doesn't do that, so you can spend a lot of time kind of just wandering, and I did, you know, and and the the ways in which to find where to go next, like literally, I probably scoured the coastlines for a solid hour in the first area before I just happened to find the bridge that bridged me to the next landmass. I'm like, oh, that's where that was. And this is definitely mechanics now, but the thing that exacerbates that is the random encounter mechanic, because if you're trying to think like, okay, have I been here or have I not? Having the Harrison Bergeron, you know, loud (laughs) noise go off in your ear every 15 seconds to completely interrupt your thought pattern of where am I going exacerbates that issue. Um, So, the world being filled with nothing, basically, is that, and and so then that, and the last thing I'll stop monologuing for a second. The <laughs> fact then that the the Game Boy screen is so small, it that even further exacerbates that issue because you're like basically there is trees as far as I can see, and if I walk in any direction for three minutes, there is still trees as far as I can see. What do I do? So yeah, <laughs> so so that's to to try and cuz i think you're right that mechanically there are a lot of things that exacerbate this but to keep it just in the visuals some of the things working in its favor are um they tell you they literally straight up tell you monsters on the other side of bridges are harder so you know if i'm supposed to be doing something in this area crossing a bridge takes me to a new area right so that is a crystal clear like delineation because most of the areas have one bridge that goes between like area a and area B. I think maybe one area has two bridges between it. Um, and it's specifically to throw you off cause it leads to a dead end. So there's the visual clarity of, okay, I'm supposed to be looking in this giant expanse of nothingness. At least I can rule out that giant expanse of nothingness. But I actually think that this world is small in its like population, right? It is very sparsely populated. The viewport is what makes it feel huge, right? The viewport being right on top of you. I mean, uh, uh, the Game Boy version of this, the whole viewport is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten tiles wide. And you're one of them, right? So it's centered <laughs> on you. So you can see a short distance in each direction, which means if you don't know where you are going, and you don't have a map handy, it is really easy to feel like, oh my god, I'm just wandering in endless nothingness, because the town you're going to might be one tile off the screen, but if you're going straight north, and it's one tile further to the east or west of you, then it's like, oh my god, where is it? And it's like, it was never far, you just couldn't see it. And the reason I'm confident that the the viewport on this is a like force multiplier for making the world feel bigger than it actually is, which maybe was intentional, but it's uh i played this game with a map after i got frustrated because there's a map (laughs) in the manual and i was like oh hell no if they're if they provide you with a map then i'm allowed to use a map because the game doesn't have a map but they provide you with a paper map so i was like i'm not i don't feel bad using this map i'm not going to just aimlessly wander and then once you know where you're going now the world feels shockingly small because your viewport is the entire world right so now you have to deal with the random encounter mechanic and stuff and we can talk about that but like it, there's this very weird sense of I think they wanted the world to feel large and expansive and 
they didn't want to make it mechanically large and expansive because then you got to have more towns and more dungeons and more stuff. And so the way they did that is basically with a visual cheat of zooming the camera way in. So everything feels like every forest feels massive because even if it's only eight tiles wide, that takes up the whole damn screen, right? So it's like everything now just feels, every mountain range feels like it goes on forever. Every river that divides two areas feels like it goes on forever. But once you can see the whole map, you're like, oh, this place ain't that big. Like I could walk across <laughs> this in five minutes, including random encounters, like no big deal. But it, the, the tight viewport, is just, it's like, it's, it's, it's like the opposite of claustrophobic. It's the viewport is claustrophobic, which makes the world feel endlessly massive. And the, uh, everything you just said, ag- agreed. And then everything you just said is even worse in caves, you know, because in caves, they then truncate that down by another two pixels to the like, and tons oh, of but- intentional dead ends. Yeah. And, and so I'm sitting here. I'm like, oh, my God, did I did I go down here before? And again, you know, every if you're trying to map it out in your mind's eye it's kind of a fool's errand because every you know 10 to 15 seconds it's like oh random encounter you're like oh, okay all right you know so um so yeah so basically to me that kind of dampens a lot of the joy of exploration if if you kind of feel that you're spinning your wheels you know and 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 to your point right is there is no in-game map to assist you, you know, to even kind of get, help you get your bearings at all. Even Pokemon had an in-game map. It sucked, <laughs> but it existed, you know, so you could have... That, that map su- did really suck. It was bad, right? <laughs> but it gave you some type of an idea of like, oh, okay, like I'm in Cerulean City and that's like three cities over from this other city. So it gave you just some type of a, of a basis. Um, so yeah, so so that's that's the, the conveyance. Um, the the other thing I wanted to to kind of mention, and this is something I've been just, you know, the the meme of the guy like at the bar, hands down, like drinks <laughs> everywhere, struggling with, which is that I have seemed to have in my curmudgeonly old man George age, um, lost a lot of my tolerance for turn based RPGs. You know, like I just and I was like, you know, oh well, they do this and do that and all this. We can get into the mechanics, but you know, I was I was you know railing against it. But again is trying my best to be a good scientist. I was like, but I enjoyed Pokemon, you know, and that's a turn-based RPG. So, but the nice thing is then like, like, like with Zelda and the visuals, you know, I'm I'm like, okay, now I've got, I've got a side by side. Why? Right. And so I will say that, um, discovery is a, a core aesthetic of both of them, right. Of exploration discovery. Right. So I think that one of the main things that's different is that, is is in the visuals in the sense that like you know when you're a uh walking around um as as a guy what's the main thing you're discovering you're discovering new monsters right so there and there are there are there are a fair number of monsters there's like four different monsters in each area right there's not 150 you know <laughs> <laughs> And and that's the thing is that in Pokemon you did run into the same you, millions of Pidgeys like the the what, Edgar no nah, Edgar Allan's the crow, um uh, whatever the the movie the crows right it was like the crows right but you know <laughs> Pidgeys Pidgeys everywhere um, Pidgeys uh, and then sometimes they were Pidgeotos but then sometimes they were the very creatively named Pidgeots um, so <laughs> I say all that though to say that that there's two main differences which is that one is you'd be like okay Pidgey Pidgey what what's what's this new thing oh my goodness it looks crazy right and they could intersperse that at, at random times because it wasn't the creature itself that was of a certain level it was a uh it, it was a different type right a different breed um but also too one of the big differences is when you're going around and you see a new monster this like cool new looking monster you know what you can't do get that monster and i think that that is a core difference between like Pokemon turn-based RPGs and other ones that makes it more explore exploratory because when you see a new monster, you're like, okay, I'm not going to beat that monster to death. Right. As well, opposed it's to it's a visual that cues a behavior change. Whereas in this, there is never a behavior change. Right. It's just like, exactly. Right. Cause you're like, Oh my gosh, what, what does that one do? It could do this. It could do that. But this one is just kind of like, okay. So even though the monsters are varied visually, a lot of the times, and this is technically a mechanics note, like, beating them to death it, that that portion of it of it doesn't change it doesn't change visually it doesn't change mechanically so i say all that to say that um the the visuals of the monsters are very varied however that it the the 
mechanically they become very samey, you know? Um, and I guess that technically should have been a mechanics note, but no, I, kind of and both, I, so. I have a whole <laughs> thing about the combat. That's, uh, absolute baller follower on to this. So, okay, so we, so we'll, we, we'll we will circle here. back to this. Don't worry. <laughs> okay. But, uh, but the, all that being said is that it is very, the, the, the UI, the HUD, all that is straight up Pokemon. Like it just, yeah. you know, they, they figured out a way to do that and they're just going to keep doing it and that's okay. Yeah. And, and this is where, uh, we do the game a little bit of a disservice by playing it on a super game boy, which is the HUD is optimized one thousand percent optimized for a game boy screen. It's black text on a white background with black outline around the box super super clear and they fit as much text as large as they can which often leads to things being weirdly truncated or cut off right because they're just trying to like communicate information on this tiny little screen in text and that's hard but when you play it on a super game boy it's easy to forget that it's supposed to be seen on like a three inch you know, poorly dim. Well, the, no, the Game Boy Color was backlit, but it's still a tiny little screen, right? So mm-hmm. it you just like you're looking at it on you know your television that's connected to your Super Nintendo with Super Game Boy plugged in, and you're like, why? Like, why is the menu so boring? Why is everything so boring? <laughs> and and the reason that this stands out even more in uh, the Game Boy Color version of this game is in the original NES game they actually did. I don't they're kind of like little vignettes where when you get into a random encounter, the entire map actually stays there and the battle screen just pops up in the center. And since you are always in the center, now there's this little painting of the area you're in and it's got the monster in the center and it's that now the menus are up and they cover the map instead of covering this like weird little painting in the middle of the screen. It's, it's kind of a visually neat way to do it. Couldn't do that on the Game Boy. No, d- d- nowhere close to the screen real estate to do that. So Instead, you actually go into an entire battle and now you have a uh, like cinema style, like almost 16 by nine bar across the middle monster in the center and the background does appropriately update. So if you're on fields, you get a fields mm-hmm. background. If you're in the forest, you get a forest background. If you happen to get into a battle on the poison land, you get the poison land background. So th- there are like nice visuals in combat but it just has these giant white bars that take up like two thirds of the screen, right? Is it's like health and stuff at the top. And then like the menu, the action menu at the bottom. And it's just, it's not, I get it. Like, again, it's, it's a game boy size screen, but it just so much of the screen is dedicated to empty boxes that we may eventually have to put text into. And that kind of is boring on a gigantic (laughs) screen. Yeah, that it is. Um, I will, I will say, uh, one thing for sure in its favor is um the the colors are awesome like they are just very very vibrant the the game boy color games man some of them really like a plus palettes like just charming little palettes yeah no so i mean like it 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 wasn't you know because it would have been very easy for them to go in kind of like a dull drowned out color scheme because you know it's it's supposed to be dragon warrior because the original game has kind of a dull drowned out color scheme (laughs) It, it it does but no it's, it's bright vibrant colors you know they I, I think that when they suddenly said a game boy color they're like dude we can't i mean it's a game boy color we have to make good on that you know so put some colors in there um to saturate the hell out of it you know <laughs> um so uh so i i did really appreciate that um this is I'm, I'm interested in your thoughts on this in my opinion um you walk bananas slow it just feels sluggish you know when you're kind of walking around now i don't know whether that was because i felt i was walking through nothing most of the time it, yeah I, I think that feeling is exacerbated by not knowing your heading if you know mm-hmm. okay i walk you know 20 tiles left and then 20 tiles up and then i'll be at the next town then if, if it actually feels fine but when you are exploring then it feels quite sluggish yeah um so and and like i said like I, I, it wouldn't have taken you know doubling the speed because then it would have been like you were moving on cocaine but uh I, again it just felt like maybe 20 percent faster you know and then uh consequently reduce the enemy encounter rate by 20 percent you know so that way which would have the consequence of being able to cover more ground and getting into fewer encounters which would have been cool but we'll, we'll, we'll wait so, on that one so um I, I just want to say this now because I don't have this in my notes and I'm afraid I might forget it. Um, there is an item 
uh, that is just like a Pokemon. I think it's literally even called Repel. And it then, is. yep. And then you learn a spell. A, a spell, yeah, that also yeah. lets you just cast that same effect. And there was before I started using a map, I was trying to get from point A to point B, but I didn't know exactly where point B was. And because that super tight viewport, I was just wandering aimlessly through this giant forested area. And it was really obnoxious. And I was like, Oh, I'll use a repel thing. And so I did. And then I took one step and got into an encounter. And I was like, "Ah, ah," right. Because I'm sure (laughs) it's something like the monsters have levels secretly and your level has to be their level or greater. Otherwise, you will still get into random encounters. Like, I'm sure there's an explanation. It's also possible that the feature just straight up doesn't work because some old games are like that. Um, but that that's a weird thing where, like, I was still suffering from the super tight camera. And I was like, oh, this will make exploring less of a chore and then have it so immediately <laughs> faceplant and fail I was just like, okay, well, all right. So I guess I got to deal with this, which I, I know like we've, we're really, we're not like even knocking on mechanics's door. Like we've just come in and have sat down and are waiting for them to get home from work. But, <laughs> but it, it's really hard to talk about how it, it's hard to express how visually frustrating it is to be walking and then just get thrown into an encounter and then be like, crap, was I going North or Northeast? Was I going right. straight east or east south? Right. Like you just you're like, ah, don't don't make me walk extra tiles trying to find this town because then I'll get into another encounter and it will happen again. <laughs> right. So so the 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 smash cut into random encounters becomes less about haha, I'm defeating monsters or oh, I cool. I haven't seen this monster before or whatever. And more about like, crap, I lost my sense of direction. Yep. Well, and also too, um, you it, it, it when you say like going it, it behooves you and I, I put thought into this and that this is still kind of a visual note is <laughs> you know it behooves you to go north south east or west not at like north northeast right mm-hmm. because you actually cover more tiles if you do that right if you zigzag right oh, you're actually yeah. covering like two, two like like half a uh, uh, double as many tiles right and i thought about that i had time to think about it because <laughs> i was wandering around nothingness and trying to think about the most effective way to do it so i would like walk the entire length and then go down 10 spaces because that was you know and then eventually i'd be like oh, okay well i ran into cliffs this time so it was and and then this is um i have two other minor notes for visuals but uh to me i the, the main thing is i was like this is digital vacuuming you know that's <laughs> <laughs> yeah it, it, yeah where you it, have to do the it's like lawn mowing the neat rows yeah yeah, it, yeah exactly S- same same concept right? where i was like i have to because again if you're if you to your point right is if you're off by a pixel by by a square then you just straight up completely miss the village right because each of the villages tend to be one or two tiles you know so it's like I can't risk that, you know, because that's kind of what happened to me the first time was I was just wandering, wandering, kind of, you know, seeing where the game was visually guiding and funneling me. And the answer is it's not. It's just, you know, there's stuff just kind of laid out, you know, um, so that uh, the other two just throwaway things is um, that I thought were good was uh, one is when you first get the wep- uh, first get a weapon and first get a shield, you get a weapon and shield like as your tile. That was yeah, neat. Yeah, like that. yeah, you do actually change. Yep. And then uh, because I remember that that kind of stuff was mind blowing back in the day. Right. Oh, my dude changed. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Because I remember the first time I was playing a video game and I equipped because I was used to playing RPGs where you equip the buster sword as opposed to the normal sword. And all it did was you did more damage. But the first time I played a game where where the sword looked different, I was like, oh, my God. Um, And speaking of, there are different animations for different weapons. So, you know, when you bonk things with the club, it looks different than when you slice them with the axe. And that was kind of cool. I like that. Late late in the game, you get the flame sword, which makes a cool little flame animation. When you get the your your ancestral sword, it makes a unique little like blue slashing animation. So they, they really took an incredibly limited set of art assets and said, like, well, we'll at least make these interesting, which is not nothing right because it shows they cared about making it visually interesting and they just had underpowered hardware right because i mean again port of a 1986 game and the port is very very faithful to the original game 
Uh, and they just like they didn't know any damn better. Like 1986, yeah. consoles were still not a sure thing in 1986. <laughs> uh, that's all I got for visuals. Uh, I got just one other thing, uh, which I will not go super deep on this because it will easily stray into mechanics. But the layouts of the towns make the layout of the overworld map look just expertly thought out because. The layouts of the towns aren't just confusing visually. They are intentionally confusing visually. There are times when you need to walk around the outside of a town and like skirt the one tile. Like there's there's three tiles, right? There's the tile your character's on. The tile to the left would take you into the town and the tile to the right would take you out of the town. But you can go up or down and walk along the grass and the visual cues that that is a thing like you need to do, like that your brain needs to think of the very border edges of going in and out of the overworld map that way exist. They did actually put things that if you look at them, there is no conceivable way you could get from here to there without walking around the outside of the town, but staying inside of the town and not going out to the overworld map. They're subtle. They are fairly subtle. Right? Like, oh, there's one guy over there. I wonder how I get to him. And then you just frustratingly do trial and error going in and out of the town map because there is no visual to indicate where the town stops and where you will, you know, enter or exit the overworld map. So it's just like a little bit more visual affordance there would have been super de duper welcome. Stuff like that that's that gamey um, really kind of takes you out of it. I remember when I was playing Skyrim one time and, uh, I was just, I was in a town or something like that, and I accidentally, I was, like, looking at this person's wares, and instead of uh, hitting, like, whatever button I was trying to, I accidentally hit take, and so I took a sweet roll, right, which registered as stealing, and then um, in that game, if you can kill all of the witnesses, right, then you get away with it, so... But then the problem was that, that people saw me now committing murder, which I had to then clean up. <laughs> so basically, you know, I think it was like 22 dead bodies later. And because of the sweet roll crime, <laughs> like I had resolved the issue. Wait, wait, <laughs> I can explain. <laughs> <laughs> like People just keep coming at me, just murdering them, just covered in blood. Like, please, can you just listen? I say all that to say like, that's hilarious, but definitely very ga- video gamey. So to me, it's just kind of like like. You, your character's walking and all of a sudden somebody says you're outside of the town now and you're like oh okay sorry i'll just take another step in all right i'm gonna keep walking you're outside of the town now okay d- dude can you just tell me where the boundaries of the, of the town are no figure it out and that's just that's just very gamey yeah but. yeah and and that is essentially exactly what's happening to the point where i would say they thought about it they thought like oh we'll lay out the towns in such a way that you have to get here in this non-obvious way. And we will communicate visually like it's super impossible to get here without coming in from the north, which you can't do, right? It's not like you could choose where you enter the town from. So they do try to nudge you along, but man, it's like, it's, I don't know how quickly I would have gotten it if I didn't already know that. And even already knowing that there were still times I screwed it up. Well, and and also too, keep in mind that back in in 1986, um, people were still like, you know, w- what what is fun? Like, is this fun? <laughs> is this what you want? You know, like, it, it mean, very much so. You know, there were there were times when people were like, you know, oh, I know, let's let's make this this one to your point, right? Like the situation you're describing, like, but people will feel super smart for being able to like slowly plot it out and figure it out. It's like that's not fun. It's not, no. And history has clearly borne out that that type of stuff isn't fun because now it's like a cardinal sin of game design to do that type of stuff. Um, but at the time, people might have been like, no, this will this will this will make the game a little longer and people will feel smart for figuring it out. It's like, no, that's not how they're going to feel. <laughs> <laughs> nah. They're going to feel something. It's, it's not going to be that, though. Narrator. It wasn't. <laughs> uh, audio? Yeah, I mean, I, I said at the top um, that the music in this is pr- particularly the opening music uh, was super nostalgic for me. Um, the music overall in the game is fine. Like it's not there aren't really any bangers in here and it's not. It's never bad. Like all the music is, is you know, good to very good. Um, the problem becomes in how you interact with that music, right? 
the battle music is a good little piece of music. You hear it a lot, right? The the menu sound is a perfectly pleasant little sound that probably was fine coming out of the Game Boy Color speakers, but you hear it a lot. And <laughs> coming out of a television speakers, it's kind of grating. So, <laughs> like... <laughs> In isolation, each thing is, you know, good to very good, but then you just get that for the thoughtfulness they put into not allowing the visuals to feel too samey by those like kind of overlapping gradients I talked about. They don't do that in the audio at all. Not at all. <laughs> like, there's just there's like a song for underground. Not only is there a song for underground, but there's a different piece of music for the level of depth you go which I know because the only times you ever go underground, there's only three levels of depth until the final dungeon, which has six levels of depth. So you get extra little like special things are really serious now music, but only there. So they clearly thought about like different areas, different music, but all the underground, all the first floor undergrounds have the same music. I think all the towns have the same town music. All the second floor undergrounds have the same music. All the battles have the same music. There is, two boss fights in this entire game and one of them is optional so there's not a lot of boss music right like there's just very 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 little music in this game um yes uh there's there's not a whole lot of music um and honestly you you know me on a good day my music notes are are sparse and this game doesn't have a lot of it and uh so as far as um music for the sake of music the one thing i will say is i don't know on what level it is because i was um but one of the the levels of the dungeon it straight up sounds like zelda music zelda dungeon music it's like the do 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 yeah yeah you know i remember i was looking for a very specific thing because i was stuck in an area and i was like okay you know what i've got a day before we record this, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm looking up a video, you know? And so, um, I started like tooling around to try to find where I was. And then, so I, I don't think it was in a dungeon that I'd gotten to yet because I would have made the note before then, but I just heard like the music and I, and I said, wait, I've got the right video, right? This isn't, this isn't OG legend of Zelda. So, um, but that's, I mean, as far as, uh, uh, sound in surface of gameplay, I mean, it's a turn-based RPG. There's not too many things that you need to be made, like, aware of very, very quickly. You've literally got an infinite amount of time to process the information if you want to, you know? So the the uh, sound effects for hitting things are serviceable. Things hitting you are serviceable. Cr- critical um, hits do make a different noise than re- regular hits, which, which, again, shows that, like, oh, so you did think about this. Yes. Um, I, I did not notice that, though, mostly because, uh, and this would be a great segue into mechanics, because normally I was hammering through the combat so fast <laughs> that I didn't even know if I had scored a critical hit most of the time, because I was like, well, we can get into that. But it was basically like, okay, I'm going to hit you. You're, it was it was punch for a punch, you know, where it's like, I'm going to hit you, you're going to hit me, and whoever's still standing at the end of this, uh, hopefully me, will then go on to do uh, to go on to do greater things. Sometimes it was the bad guy, and then, you know, I'd see in the next town that they were wearing glasses to show that time had passed, you know, <laughs> <laughs> it's later now. Um, I, uh, I do have one specific thing I want to mention in the audio. Cause I, I think like, I, I always feel bad sending the audio up river like this and just being like, yeah, I don't know. There were noises, but, but like, <laughs> it's kind of how unfortunately a lot of game boy games are. And because this was a port of a NES game, it, they didn't, at it like they didn't cheat and say oh, okay well now every dungeon has unique dungeon music now every island or every other side of the river has unique other side of the river music like they didn't do that right they, they did really faithful port which sometimes you're probably grinding your teeth as the designers being like but we could add something here and make it richer and they're like nah um but because we talked so much about the super tight viewport and the map I think it's a really interesting uh, follow on into audio because you would think like, how could that possibly follow on into audio? The reason that that possibly follow on into audio is because when you collide with something that you cannot walk through, it makes a noise. And because I was started using a map, I would look away from the screen at the map and then walk into something <laughs> and burnt. And so I probably heard that noise. I don't know. 
50 times more than a person just normally playing the game would because I would look down at the map and then collide with some mountains, look down at the map and then collide with some water, look down at the map and then collide with the wall. Like I just was constantly running into stuff. And every time the game had to go, Hey, you hit something. Hey, Hey, you hit something. And if you hold the direction, it will continue to produce that noise. So like this is the dark price you pay for using a map is like, I think using a map is worth it because it solved a bunch of other mechanical problems for me. And it undid this weird visual thing that I think is probably intentional, but you you do pay a price and you pay a price by, unless you're going to let go of the D pad every time you look away to check the map, you're going to run into stuff and you're going to hear that noise a lot. (laughs) And that's fair. Um, Controls mechanics. Yeah, dude, I wish I had more to say about the audio, but I just don't. So, yes, controls and mechanics. All right, let's do this thing. Um, so, okay, uh, this I, I kind of mentioned before how, you know, like this differs from Pokemon because, you know, you can't catch the monsters, right? So so it, it, it lowers that discovery threshold. So one of the things that I ran into was that I was really excited to go out, explore this 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 world, but the the difference between exploring this world in Legend of Zelda and exploring this world in, in this one is um, that it was not based off of my skill. It was based off of my avatar's strength, right? So basically, um, and I, I find finding equivalence like fun. Um, so I literally said, you know, in my notes was that the minute that I left town, there was kind of a timer, right of how many paces i could take before i died and was booted back to in front of the king because that was the easiest way to do this right you know so i'd I'd walk around and 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 explore a little bit and i'd get into random encounters now exactly how far i could get varied a little bit because it varied a little bit by how many encounters i entered and exactly how much damage i did and exactly how much damage they did to me but especially in the beginning those variables are pretty static you know so i was like okay well i'm gonna get 50 paces out and I'm going to die and I'm going to do that until I level up at which point I can get 70 paces out and then I'm going to die until I can level up and that was just my radius slowly increased as I gained levels um but had nothing to do with how skillful or adroit I was playing it was just whether or not I my numbers were higher than the other person's numbers has enough time passed in the form of random encounters that you are now allowed to go to the next concentric ring distance right yeah, and that was the thing that in Legend of Zelda was different is because, you know, if you didn't have the best equipment in Legend of Zelda, chances were you were going to get your lunch at. But maybe not. I mean, like, you could feasibly go to Ganon just right off of the top, and if you, you know, never, or just to each dungeon, like, you know, the, the last dungeon, right? Oh, yeah, dude, people do three heart runs of Zelda games where they're like, yeah, I just won't pick up any heart containers. Yeah, it's it's doable. It's hard, but it's doable. Um, so I feel that that, that was something that really kind of graded on me and so basically what i kind of wrote down was it's like the the overall note which it's the longest page turn ever right (laughs) where it's 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 like you know as 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 eagle raptor says like imagine imagine if you had to walk across your room back and forth the whole time to turn the page into the book right because i was excited to explore this world i was excited to you know go and slay the dragon i was excited to do all of this stuff but I couldn't because I wasn't high enough level yet. So I had to go out there and grind and I didn't want to do that. So, well, and they, they get you in two ways, right? Cause you, you have two avatar currencies. One of your avatar currencies is experience and that buys you levels. And then one of your avatar currencies is currency, which buys <laughs> you equipment. And this game for as small scale as a lot of the things in this game are the world really isn't that big once you know where you're going it's very sparsely populated right like there's a lot of things at a very small scale one of the things that is most disorienting in how small the scale is is in the lack of stuff the difference between like the club and the first sword or the sword and the second sword and i think there's four four or five swords total. So there's like seven total weapons in the entire game is massive. Like it's as massive as gaining a level. Sometimes it's substantially more massive. So saying like, Oh, I'm going to grind to gain a couple levels is also, Oh, I'm going to grind to get enough money to buy the next shield. Cause I think there's literally only three shields. There's like, 
three or four armors, three or four shields, and then I think like five or six or seven weapons. In the whole game, that's everything. All There's that's no yeah. anything else. So not only do you have to spend that experience currency to gain your levels, you also have to spend currency currency to get equipment because the difference between success and failure may be one level or one, like the one shield upgrade or the one sword upgrade. So you you have to kind of juggle these things. And on the one hand, I kind of like RPGs that aren't afraid of small numbers where it's like, yeah, the difference between a five, you know, attack sword and a seven attack sword is huge and get the seven attack sword, right? Because it's, it's a little frustrating when it's like, Oh, there's a million weapons. And it's like, yeah, but who cares? Like none of it, right. they, they just look different. No, nothing matters. Right. This is all meaningless. So it's, it's a, <laughs> we're it's all going to die. Everything. <laughs> It's a, I know it's a fine line to walk, but mechanically they decided at some point in this game, we want you to consume basically a hundred percent of the game in these different areas. And one of those areas is the stuff. Like, can you beat the game without getting the best sword and the best armor? Yes, because they're hidden. You have to go out of your way to get the best sword and the best armor. But like, will you? Probably not because half of the NPCs you talk to, because the world is very sparsely populated. Talk about your ancestor in this version. It, his name is Loto. I think in the original, it was like Eric anyway, but like everybody talks about your ancestor and everybody tells you to find his sword and find his armor, right? Like you are constantly being told like, go get his stuff. So you're probably not going to go fight the last boss until you have found the stuff because everybody's been telling you to do that. I I also think that for me, um, like the the question is, you know, why 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 these types of games, right? And 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 a lot of times it's it's oh well, you know, I I, I walked around and I, I became more powerful, and it's like yeah, I remember back in the day, I just I love that type of stuff, right? To see the numbers go higher, I I just I don't care about seeing the numbers go higher anymore it's just not not a a fun time right i think that what broke me with that was playing dungeons and dragons and at one point just being like oh i can just make a 20th level character i can make a 40th level character make whatever oh maybe this isn't about the numbers going higher (laughs) you know because because that's the thing is that like like as your numbers go higher you face um you face things that are more powerful um so there's there's that i Here's here's a this is a kind of a minor note, but it, it frustrates me. Heal should never be your first spell, right? It's dumb, and here's why: is because if heal is your only spell, don't give me the spell, give me more hit points because mm. the spell's meaningless. You know, like now because there's no choice, right? So I'm like, okay, I'm just I'm, I've now got mana which I'm going to pump into my veins as hit points, right? Now if they give you a different spell like magic missile first right then then it's like okay well do you want to do more damage or do you want to survive longer right it's like okay now now i've got a choice but when they gave me heal first as i was like just just give me more hit points don't don't do this to me um and the 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 other thing that i'm just gonna keep rambling about is um <laughs> there's no fast travel in this game which no there was not there, fast- there's no mode of transportation at all you see at the all. whole world because you have to go everywhere to do everything and you see it all on foot yep <laughs> even pokemon gave you a uh a, a bike right you know eventually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah the dragon warrior never even gets to ride a goddamn track yeah right i mean he, he just kills dragons it's terrible um this is apropos of nothing actually so uh, you know what remind me in the after show to tell you i watched Sh- shang chi recently oh, and yeah. um yeah, it's 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 good. Um and uh, I had a, a a thing um about like the final the final fight that I wanted to just share with you. Um so yeah, so so not so yeah, you see it all on foot. Um that means that dying is a super chore because if you kind of were off exploring in the maxima of your radius, right? Well, do all of that again, you know, and and it's less meaningful now because now before you needed 50 hit points to level up and now you need 300 and the things that you're going to be walking through give you two hit points, right? Or two experience points. So the, it's just, it's waste, it's waste of time. It's exhausting. Yeah. So th- this is one of the things that I had a revelation about this uh, when I beat the game because I straight up failed on my first attempt. And I was, I thought I was going to fail on my second attempt, but I actually managed to beat the final boss. And it, it 
solidified something that we have been kind of like beating around the bush about, which is uh, the combat in this game is essentially devoid of strategy because yes. it's always one V one, right? So they literally changed this starting in dragon warrior two, right? So from, for every <laughs> subsequent game, there is more monsters and more party members. And so you have support party members and DPS party members, right? And tank party members. And you, you like have to think like what you're going to do. This isn't that this is link against the Mogoblins or whatever the hell they're called. Moblins. Is it Moblins? Moblins. Moblins. Moblins yeah. Right. This is link against the Moblins, except you're choosing actions from a menu, right? When Link fights the Moblins, you have to duck and weave and dodge and hold up your shield and then, you know, fire your sword beam across the screen and don't get hit because then you can't fire the sword beam. And now you've been depowered by making a mistake, which is always an interesting design choice. But like <laughs> it, this game is just trading blow for blow. And then you use a potion or you cast heal and then later heal more. Um <laughs> I did like that. <laughs> right? Yeah. I, so in the original That's NES game... That's what it says on the 10, man. <laughs> yeah. In, in the original NES game, the damage spell is called Hurt and then Hurt More, <laughs> which I was so sad that they fixed that translation in this yeah. version because Hurt and Hurt More, why not? Um, but I, I think they... I think they honestly thought about this and kind of to your point, it just turned out this wasn't a good idea. So it's not that it was thoughtless. It just... It's like, oh, this actually isn't that fun of a way to do this, which is if you are going to fight the final boss, the final boss can be seen from the starting castle, right? Which mm -hmm. is super cool that it's like, oh, crap, oh, he's yeah. right there. Um, but you have to walk all the way around the outside of the world and then go through all like seven or eight levels of the final dungeon to get to the final boss. When you die you keep all of the experience and gold you had when you died, which means technically, technically you never have to grind in this game. You just explore until you die. And then you yep. just explore until you die. And then once you've seen everything and you're making your final assault on the castle, you can literally just go make your final assault on the castle and just keep doing that until you have leveled up enough. And that's not very fun, but, <laughs> but I do think, especially considering, you know, when in history they were designing this game in the early 1980s, I do think it's really interesting that someone probably thought grinding is not fun, but trying to be successful and learning what worked, what didn't, that is fun. The problem is there is no strategy. It's not like on my second attempt of the boss, I did anything dramatically different. All I did was make sure when I got there, I had full MP so I could cast heal more. Like that was my strategy. Don't die. You know, like yeah. you have a, a stop spell. It's literally called stop spell, which is supposed to stop your enemies from casting magic. That doesn't work on the final boss. And you have a sleep spell, which robs them of like, 1d4 turns that doesn't work on the final boss so you're literally just slugging it out and then healing before they kill you and then slugging it out again like i i crunched this math live on stream because i was like okay as long as i can hit him at least twice before i have to heal i bet i'll be able to deal enough damage before he wears me down and it turns out i was right and that's just nice it's just not fun like i i think it's super interesting that they thought we don't want to make the character or the player grind. So we will not make you lose all your experience when you die. But then even that they managed to kind of make it unfun because when you die, the King harangues you for it. Oh, he does. Yeah. <laughs> so, so it makes death feel like an emotional and moral failing, even though mechanically it's kind of the right thing to do fight until you drop and then just stock up on potions and get back out there. Like mechanically you are absolutely incentivized to just let death happen. But narratively they make fun of you for it and that's true and and i think that that the the thing that where they kind of miss on that one right and, and there's no way they would have known to do this is that the king is legitimately disappointed in you you know yeah yeah he's not a mad game, he's just disappointed no. right a game that uses this exact same mechanic but it's amazing is borderlands you know <laughs> 
But that's yeah. because the new U station is tongue in cheek, right? You know, it's because it's it's you know one of my favorite ones is the do not think about the fact that every time you've used a new U that you died the first time and that the first version of U was the real version of U. Do not think about this, you know. It's like, oh yeah, technically every time I teleport I die, you know. So it's it's funny and it's on theme of the thing. But the king just being like, oh man, dude, you you died, bro. So I'm just I'm so sad at you. And you're like, all right, no, I get it. Like just it cast. You keep casting your resurrection magic. I'm gonna go <laughs> tirelessly kill this thing for eternity because I'm kind of his slave at that point because he won't let me die. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's true. Like yeah. m- maybe the reason you just wander out into the wilderness to fight dragons. Cause you're like, hey, I'll succeed or I'll die and I'll be famous for having attempted it. But then when you fail, the King's like, mm-mm. Mm-mm. you can be famous that- for succeeding or you can be famous for succeeding. He's the Dennis Nedry of the Grim Reaper. Ah, ah, ah. Ah, ah, ah. But, like, <laughs> but with death. Um, <laughs> so, so, uh, uh, so technically to your point right then um you you have there is zero cycle time which is great right you know there's no cycle time because you know there there both is because it takes you forever to get to something new but technically you gain something so it drops cycle time to zero here's something that i think is interesting that i just kind of want to discuss as a general game thing but it does apply here which is that there's an a real because i was basically again like you you were saying okay if i can get in two hits before i have to heal then i can beat the thing that was the math you were talking i was talking the the radius math of how how long can i explore before i drop and you you'd think that that would increase linearly with your level right so as you gain levels but it doesn't it spikes and i think that and this is something that all rpgs kind of deal with which is that if you linear have your character improve linearly will actually cause really weird difficulty drops and spikes in the game because is let's say that all the enemies in an area have like five hit points right and let's say every time i gain a level right I do an additional damage, right? So I'm dealing three damage, right? And every enemy takes two hits. I gain another level. I now deal four damage. Every enemy takes two hits. I gain one more level. I now deal five damage. Every enemy takes one hit. And that makes a huge difference, right? Because if you go first, they now deal zero damage. Zero damage, which means that now these enemies went from being meaningful in some degree to completely meaningless, you know? And so I thought that that was kind of interesting where basically is I, I would be dealing with uh like a drakey or something like that and i was like man these guys suck they deal like six damage and i've only got like 30 hit points so i can realistically only fight about five of these because i go then they go then i go and then they're dead and then all of a sudden they became nothing enemies the minute that i got a sword that d- d- didn't really make me deal that much more damage i think actually it was a level where like it's like oh now i'm dealing three more damage but it was enough to eclipse it to the point where I now dealt them all of their hit points. So it's something that all RPGs kind of deal with and, and developers need to be cognizant of. But it was particularly evident in this game when, like you said, if you go first, now all of a sudden it's like, uh, this enemy is now meaningless to me. Well, and this is the the reason that no other RPG, I'm sure there are others. I'm just saying no other like classic JRPG that I know of is straight up 1v1 slugfests right yep because if there were even if it was you against multiple enemies then it's like okay i have to put this one to sleep and then i can you know murder this one because that one has less hit points or i you know i have a spell that does more damage against it or something like if there was some kind of uh like opportunity to be a tactician or strategist but it's not ever it's just a straight slugfest from the second you walk out of the castle to the last time you walk out of the castle. Like it's just, I will beat you to death before you beat me to death, like all the way up to, and including the final boss. Yep. I think it was all, it, it, it's, it's all that portion of the fight of Piccolo versus Android 17, where they're just literally punching each other in the gut as mm-hmm. hard as they can. It's yeah. just that. Yeah. So I over actually, I, I do want to give, credit slash faint praise uh there is uh the i think the last town you go to um there's a golem outside like just kind of guarding the town i guess and you can slug fest him to death but there is one item that as far as i can tell you use it in this one and only one occurrence which puts him to sleep 
and then you beat on him until he wakes up because the amount of rounds they wake up in is random. So you beat on him until he wakes up. Then you use the flute again and he goes back to sleep. So you you walk up to this town, lull him into unconsciousness and then repeatedly stab him. And then if he wakes up, you lull him back into unconsciousness. And like, is that incredibly deep tactical uh, strategic gameplay? Not really, but comparatively compared to just a straight <laughs> slugfest, it's like because you could very easily go there and not get this one optional item, right? Like there's the let's say the game has a hundred different inventory things like things that could be in your inventory to play the game at all. You will probably find 97 of them, right? So like there's the, the armor that you might not find cause it's kind of hidden. The, the pixie flute is the name of the thing that puts him to sleep. Um, and the, the, uh, sword, uh, Lotus sword that you might not find if you don't explore the last dungeon, but basically everything else you will come into contact with. So it's like, uh, okay. Like you almost thought about like, how do we make one V one combat kind of interesting? And then like, you sort of gave up on it. <laughs> the one, uh, uh, final minor note that I have for, uh, mechanics is, um, you can heal outside of combat. And I like that. Not every RPG did this back in the day. Uh, there were many games where you could only cast spells like in combat. And that was always just so frustrating because it's like, oh, so you, you're telling me I have to wait until I'm actively tr- defending for my life to cast this healing spell? Like fireball I get, you know? Well, I mean, kind of not because if anybody's played D&D, you know that fireball is the answer to every possible scenario. <laughs> Got all kinds of tactical usage. <laughs> it's a great gif I saw recently where it's, uh, do you remember the episode of The Simpsons when uh, Bart shakes up the uh, beer for Homer? Right? Oh, yeah, but he does it like in a paint shaker. <laughs> Yeah, and so like the house like explodes, right? It yeah. just shows Bart, and he says, "I didn't ask how big the room was. I said I cast fireball." <laughs> and <it> just, <laughs> uh, that's which is a good, uh, that's a good meme. Yeah, right. Yeah, but uh, I say all that to say I, I appreciate it when games allow me to cast spells that, that have meaningful out of you know even like uh, you know restore anything that that has like some type of healing property that allows me to do it outside of combat which was not always the case back in the day but they did it in this one which is good well and the so the magic armor which is the last armor you can buy and then uh lodo's armor um when you're walking around on the map you just heal you just That's sweet yeah and then lodo's hot, armor even goes to live yeah yeah it i mean it basically by the time you get lodo's armor you're pretty damn close to the end of the game unless you did stuff like in a very bizarre order um so at that point it's like you heal when you're walking around so you could cast repel or use the repel item um and be totally absolved of combat and then uh, Lotus armor goes above and beyond the magic armor and also makes the poison ground not hurt you, which is narratively appropriate because to get up to the final dungeon, you have to cross a huge expanse of poison ground. So it's supposed to be like, OK, I'm finally steeled against, you know, the the big bad. I'm, I'm as prepared as I can be. Here I go. Um, it, yeah, it's just like so many things where they they like dip their toe into a good idea, but because they didn't know any better, they didn't fully commit to it. And it's like, eh, some of these turned out to be great ideas and I really wish you'd done more. Some of these turned out to be terrible ideas and I'm glad no other game ever did this again. <laughs> that is true. Um, that is also all that I have. You got anything else? Uh, I just want to quickly mention the, um, the inventory is uh, designed by a madman because <laughs> You only have 10 spots where you can carry stuff, which is like, okay, fine. But then you got to carry like a bunch of crap in the first half of the game and certain items stack and others don't like healing items stack, but repels and torches don't. So like, why? Like if, (laughs) if you wanted to make this so that I couldn't stock up on these, then change the way this thing is interacted with. Like, don't, don't because I bought like five or six repels and I was like, oh, cool. Like now I have some because I didn't have the spell yet. And then she was like, oh, I can't sell you anymore. You can't carry anymore. And I was like, wait, what? And I opened my inventory and it's just like repel, 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 repel. And I was like, come, come on. Right. And like <laughs> you have to get keys, which are like a friggin chore, but you can only carry five for some or six. Like they just won't sell you anymore. And certain places like you need the keys to get through there. Like final dungeon. Like 
just I get it. <laughs> like, but this this to me feels like it's probably half mechanics and half hardware limitations is on the original nest. They were like, we can't keep 150 items in memory. And the truth was they could, they just didn't know how, right? Like later games had no problem with that kind of thing. Um, so I, I think it's like half bad programming and half mechanically, they don't want you to carry around 500 repels. Cause it will, then you'll get under leveled cause monsters won't be attacking you. So it's, it's just like ugh, inventories, man, inventories. <laughs> You, you would think somebody would have figured this out and then every RPG would have just copied it forever. But no, like we keep finding <laughs> new ways to do weird things with inventories. Well, and, and I, I did see a meme recently where it just showed, uh, you know, Link in, um, in the most recent Breath of the Wild. It says, I am so sick of video games giving people unrealistic expectations of how many swords someone can carry in their inventory, you know, because <laughs> it's just like sword, 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 sword. And it's like, all right, but but again, you know, to your point, right? Is that we in a in a high fantasy game, it's got fantasy on the ten, right? Like, I'm not playing this for gritty realism. I'm not playing this so that way I have like exact, you know, having a total max carrying weight for inventory. Like, you can mechanically play with that. Okay, I can get that. But you know, to say you know, well, you're carrying two swords. You can't carry anything else on you. It's like stop it, stop it. This isn't, this is not why I'm here. Yeah, not, you know, not even, it's not even on the list of reasons I'm here. It's not a low reason. <laughs> it's not on, yeah. it did not make the cut. Yeah. No, like literally I remember how crushingly disappointed I was when I found out that unless the sword is under the length of between your wrist and like midway down your arm, you can't wear that crap on your back and draw it ever, you know? <laughs> Because your arm's not long enough. Yeah. And I remember finding that out when I went as Trunks one year for Halloween. <laughs> and I was like, this is going to be the most awesome thing ever. And I got the sword. And I was like, oh, no. <laughs> and so occasionally I'd draw the sword. And then and then like a very not stupid Saiyan and like a Kira Toriyama. Haha, see, it's still, it's still, I'm still talking about the thing. Um, I'd have to go to one of my friends and very nicely ask them to put my sword away for me on my back. <laughs> I say all that to say that wasn't a fun fantasy. That's not why I was the Super Saiyan, and that's not why I play fantasy games to, to, to meticulously comb over my inventory. That's why I play The Sims. Yeah, it's different. <laughs> you go to a different yeah. store for different stuff. Uh, yeah. So are we ready to uh, ask the final question? Let, let, let us ask it. So, Lions, did it hold up? Uh, No. So... <laughs> So here's my my closing for this, I think, is going to be as bizarre and complicated as trying to explain which version of this game we played, because here's how I actually feel. I actually had a decent time playing this once I completely gave myself over to the bizarre limitations of the era that this game was designed in, which normally would mean, well, full nostalgia goggles. I enjoyed it, but because I was trying to give it a pass. Here is the uh, weird quirk of history that gets this game to skate in on a nostalgia monocle, which is when you think about the way we described all of the mechanics of this game, the super close crop visuals, the fact that it was on the Game Boy, the sort of low fidelity sound, that sounds a lot like a mobile RPG right? Really simple mechanically, press one button to kill them, try to kill them before they kill you, right? No tactics, no strategy, no thinking. And you know what? They ported this game to Android and to iOS, right? So if you're not walking around with a Game Boy Color all the time, you could actually play a version of this game that has way better graphics and way better music and is like, it looks nice, but it's got the same drop dead simple. This is meant to consume in little tiny snackable bites right or like while you're waiting for the bus or whatever like th this game we have pac-man around in game design that people are now designing brand new rpgs for mobile phones that are exactly like dragon warrior was 30 friggin years ago so should you go play this game on the original nintendo absolutely not should you play the super nintendo port maybe I, I, it looks nice but it's like a totally different game the Game Boy port is close to the Nintendo port, which I would say probably hard pass on because it's just 
not very interesting. But should you play the souped up, beautiful looking mobile version on your phone while you're waiting for the next train to arrive? Yeah, probably. Like if you like mobile RPGs and you need it to be a dumbed down experience, here's a game that was a mobile game 30 years before mobile devices. So (laughs) I'm going to slot it in as a nostalgia monocle. But either actually play it on a Game Boy and actually play it as a mobile game or play the modern version, the souped up version on a mobile phone as a mobile game. If if you're going back to the NES original, no, absolutely not. The Super Nintendo one, I can't weigh in on. But if you're going to play this, do not play it on a Super Game Boy in front of a television like we did. It's not that experience. It's a snackable mobile experience. So bizarre way to like slide into home on a nostalgia monocle but that's that's where i landed yeah for me it's uh it's it's full-on nostalgia goggles um you know which which of all the games we've we've reviewed never have i been less prepared to argue with you like when i (laughs) when i was writing my notes i was like he's gonna say full nostalgia goggles and how could i possibly disagree with him (laughs) no i mean like to me this is just literally an experience of make the numbers go higher I, I can't think of any anything else that's really a draw for this game. It's like, yeah, the, the, the visuals are are nice and colorful, but OK, you know, like that, that that's like saying that, that the grammar is good in a book, you know, um, outside of that, like the narrative is is I mean, stock out of, you know, like <laughs> go, there, there's the big bad. Go beat him up, you know, um, S- save the princess, slay the dragon. Yeah, literally, you know. Um, so, uh, so yeah, so, I mean, there's just not much to this game. Like the visuals are good, but they're nothing to write home about, you know? So, um, I think that, that to your point, right, is if somebody had just a tremendous amount of free time, yeah, sure, go for it. But I think increasingly with the amount of entertainment that's trying to shoulder its way in and like compete for our attention, this one would require a tremendous amount of puffery in order to like make it into the top. So puff, puff. The curtain falls. The music plays, the credits roll, then it all fades to black. And you're left by yourself, the fanfare is gone. There's no player two there by your side to share victories won. But as you slowly progress down the hall to your bed, a few great events leak back into your head from the time that you spent traversing the land battling evil fighting the darkness just sword in hand your memories creep in with the edge of a smile you realize again what you lost for a while Gonna think back much less on how you saved the day than on all 